Hey everybody, Barry here again. Today, we're gonna paint the frame. We're gonna finish painting the frame. My wife Cass and my daughters Chloe and Lily came up last night and helped me paint the frame. It looks so good. What an awesome, awesome job they did. A couple spots that I have to touch up, like right here, where this leg of the ramp was it under here. And then this spot right here, where this spot was right there. So, you know, a couple little small touch up, finish up jobs. And as far as I can tell, the whole thing is painted. Of course, you can see that there's rungs, there's drips. That's just extra paint, extra protection. I think it looks super cool, man. A couple spots I got to touch up right here, a little bit missed. Um, so this paint is not cured yet. You can see that even right there, is still like wet looking it's going to take a couple days to cure it is enamel based oil paint or enamel oil based i don't know how you say it is real thick paint it's really heavy it takes a while to dry so let's finish it up and then we can get to turning this thing back into a roller a little bit at a time the paint that i'm using is called black splendor it's painted over part number is right there 469410 flat black it's Krylon rust tough enamel oil paint it stinks it burns your eyes it's amazing just to make sure that it's not separated i made this stir stick i guess you'll call it and it works really well it gets all the clumpy parts out and the paint is like wicked thick, but also sort of runny. But that'll do it. It's just a piece of threaded rod that I bent. It's really no big science to it. I definitely suggest using a drop cloth because this paint drips and runs. It's like wicked thick but it almost seems to go on like water. Like it's so heavy that it just drips off. I'm just gonna touch up a few spots here that I can see that are missed. When you look at black paint for so long, everything starts to look black. For spots that I couldn't get at, I used some, it's the same brand, Krylon Rust Tough, but in a spray bomb and just sprayed it. Everywhere. My feet are sticking to the drop cloth because the paint on that is not dry from last night. <laughs> this is messy and gloopy and sticky. When I painted the rat rod frame with it a couple of years ago, and it seems to be holding up really, really well, and I didn't even do half the prep that I did on this one, so it should work well. Hopefully it'll look good. I'm painting this to protect it because I'm in Newfoundland where the roads are salted and the temperature can change by 20 degrees Celsius in like a matter of one day. So there's no way to stop the rust, but at least I can try to slow it down. And it makes the frame look good too, so. This is flat black paint. So it's gonna not be glossy like this. It'll be more flat like you can see there. I would have liked to have, oh boy, that is gloopy. I would have liked to have been able to like suspend the frame by a big wire or something to be able to paint the full frame with no interruption, with no waiting till the next day kind of thing. Just to make sure that everything cures evenly and consistently. But this will work just fine. It's just running right over there. I put the brush everywhere that I could stuff the brush into the frame rails 
in around the engine mounts. I even took the mounting plates off the frame that the engine mount bolts to, just to make sure that I get it everywhere that I possibly can. And I stuck the spray paint nozzle in through the frame, in through all the holes. I know it's not gonna get full coverage in there, of course, but everywhere that I can, I really hate rust. If this was like a Texas frame or something with just discoloration, I would've been fine. I wouldn't have bothered to paint it because as for the looks thing, I'm not extremely concerned. Rust protection is where I wanna be. Cool. I'll paint it up. A few small spots where I can see that it's not perfect, where there's a little bit of bare frame showing through. I'll give that a little touch up and then we're good. Anywhere else after today, I'll probably just go over with a bit of a spray bomb or something. So I don't have to crack this can open and stink out the whole building. Every time I want to do a touch up or something that I miss, this stuff is strong. Well, I suppose I should paint the rest of this stuff. New ball joints are in the control arms, so I guess I could paint the arms. I could paint this front cross member, this transfer case mount cross member, or transmission mount cross member. I could paint the hitch, torsion bars, Portion bar cross member, leaf springs. I got so much stuff I can paint. This is awesome. I went to paint all this and I forgot to buy a brush. So I pulled this one out of the garbage from yesterday and look, that's wild. The, it's not even dried hard yet. <laughs> that paint takes forever. Don't use that stuff if you're in a rush. I know I haven't done much of the time lapse stuff lately, but doing this in real time would be the second worst thing to watching paint dry. What a huge difference. What a major difference that made. I've got these painted on both sides, but the control arms, I'm gonna wait a couple hours for them to kind of tack up and dry, and then I'll flip them over and paint the top side. You can see there, there's some shiny spots on that, so it's not dry yet. The hitch, I'm gonna run the wire wheel over to degrease it. Not necessarily degrease, sorry. Uh, Descale it, I should say. It's not bad, but there's still some edges and stuff here that I'll have to get rid of that's flaky. There's no good to paint the flaky rust. And you can see it right here too, that's no good. But that looks way better. It's gonna match the frame so well. I just came back to paint some more parts and I heard a real funny clicking noise. And, oh man, that stinks. That does not smell healthy. Smells like ammonia, actually. Oh, yeah. Huh. The can rusted or what? If that contaminates my paint, they're going to be rotted. Oh, I was hoping it was going to explode. <laughs> Climactic, wasn't it? Oh, it's too windy for this. Stay. I've got to descale this hitch. What a good time. 
to use the coolest tool ever made. <laughs> I got a lot of the loose stuff off. Well, I guess I'll just wire wheel it real quick and uh, paint that up. That is pretty good. I'm sure I've said before, I'm not looking for absolute perfection here. I am looking for it to look good and look as if pretty much it came out of the factory at a glance from a distance. And I think I pretty much hit the mark on that. Still got some spots that are drying. This paint, as I've said, takes forever. Down in the valley there, you can see that glass is what's not dry, of course. It'll dry dead flat. This is quite glossy. It won't be tomorrow. Well, this one's a few days into making now. Everything is nice and dry. God, it looks so good. That looks like a brand new hitch, dude. Awesome. And I came over here and off camera just because I cleaned up a couple of these parts. Here's the front sway bar, two torsion bars, torsion bar cross members here cleaned up. So I was like, I'll just go outside under the tap. You hear that, don't you? I'll go outside under the tap and just uh, wash them off out there. Yeah, good time. Good time. And it's very windy, very cold, and very gross. And it's supposed to snow for like three straight days. So, uh, King Philip, I'm a little envious right now of you being in Florida, washing your cheap Cherokee in your shorts. <laughs> yeah, good time. Anyway, I want to paint those now. And I'm gonna spray that front diff silver along with this diff bracket here because I don't want to paint that black. It wouldn't look very factory looking. Maybe I'll paint the flanges and the yoke black just to kind of clean that up a little bit. And yeah, I just want to get everything protected and make it look good. I don't know where I'll stop. I have to stop somewhere, of course. Uh, I don't know. I'd like to get the whole drivetrain at least looking really good. And then everything that bolts on top of it, well, I can't really afford car paint, I'd like to paint this thing yet. So it's gonna to go together. It will be one complete vehicle. And then in next year or a couple of years time, probably, then I will save up the money, buy the paint. This paint has gotten like insanely expensive lately. Maybe one day the price will go down. Maybe that's wishful thinking. It's crazy windy, so I'm not gonna be able to get much actual filming, but this is actually pretty neat, right? and left so you can see the l here with a little arrow going this way i have them on the wrong side but i didn't know torsion bars had sides and like directions i know this is the back because it's absolutely punished with the air hammer trying to get it out so that uh, that's pretty neat and right and it sort of twists like that i guess i don't know it's pretty cool
So I got a lot more done over the last few days than I actually expected to. Obviously the front diff is here, bracket is just in under it. Torsion bar mount. Here's the twisty bars. Front engine cross member and the transmission cross member. There's a control arm. The other control arms, the hitch, and the front sway bar. That's a lot of progress. Now, it's been over the last week or so and I've kind of picked away at it here and there. But I think this is a good place to finish it up because I've got a lot of really quick progress coming up very soon. Next video, I bet. I need to put this thing together. I've already done it on film. Maybe I'll do a little bit on it, but I'm not going to focus heavily on putting this thing together because I already did it once and I don't like doing the same thing repeatedly, especially in a short timeline. So in the next couple of videos, we're going to see, hopefully, the cab on this frame. That'll be nice. That'll be nice, nice, nice progress. So look out for that. And I cannot wait to see what it looks like, especially with the lowering torsion keys that Aiden sent me with the axle flip that I did a couple of weeks ago. And then it'll start to look like a real truck. And as soon as I get the engine transmission transfer case laid in place, then I can hook the drive shaft up. And as soon as I get the engine transmission transfer case all laid in place as an assembly, I can check the uh, rear yoke angle that comes out of the transfer case. And then I can set my rear differential angle, the pinion angle, and then I can weld the perches onto the rear diff, then I think I'll be able to paint it, which I'm excited for, because I don't want to see a rusty rear diff in a nice cleaned up painted frame. So thanks for coming on this, another journey with me and checking out another video. Thanks my YouTube members, patrons, and subscribers. If you want to check out my Patreon, it's patreon.com slash station mode rat rods. My YouTube members link is down here. And thanks for watching. Have a great day, everybody.